learn all about living in Merida, Mexico from expat Fellini Wijensina in this video interview with expats in Mexico. Decided to choose Mexico as a base, partially because uh, the temporary residency was fairly easy for me to get. And my partner was born in Mexico. So he moved to the U.S. as a child. So he was a citizen in Mexico. So we thought, oh, you know, so that works perfectly. So and also, you know, we researched Mexico and it sounded like really exciting and beautiful and also a great base to travel to Latin America and Europe. Unlike from Australia, traveling to Europe is a 25-hour flight. <laughs> so then uh, last year, March 2019, we moved to Mexico. And we were in Puerto Ayanta, actually, Riviera Nayarit, just on the border of Puerto Ayanta. And uh, so then using that as a base, we traveled in uh, South America, Central America. And then we uh, gave up that base and went to Europe and Sri Lanka. And then we returned and we thought we were planning to continue to stay in Puerto Ayanta. But then we thought, oh, you know, maybe a change of scenery would be good. We'll move close to the Caribbean. And then we researched between, you know, Cancun and Merida, and we did this long road trip from Puerto Alta here. So on the way, we thought, oh, you know, Merida sounds uh, safer, and also it's close enough to the Caribbean, but it also has a lot of art and culture and, um, you know, a lot of expats. So we, and cheaper, so we chose Merida. So tell me, since you lived in the Puerto Vallarta area for a while, what are the di major differences between uh, Merida and, uh, and Puerto Vallarta? Yeah, so uh, we lived there for six months. So I think um, the biggest difference for me, not exactly in Merida, but the Caribbean Ocean versus the Pacific is that the Caribbean is turquoise and it's like very clear. So um, the ocean-wise, I think the Caribbean has, has nicer waters. But uh, the main difference for me, I would say, is that uh, Merida is a little cheaper than Puerto Alta. A little cheaper. But otherwise, I mean, Puerto Alta also had great art and culture. And I like that art gallery walk you guys have on Wednesdays or something. <laughs> and, and had lots of events. It was good. I think Merida is, has more um, of the Mayan culture, more of indigenous Mexico, lots of events around the traditional Mayan history and also the lots of pyramids from Chichen Itza to so many and lots of um, little towns and haciendas. And so there is like more of the indigenous Mexican culture to experience here than in Puerto Alta. In Puerto Alta, I found it was just uh, it was um, Mexico versus the expats. It was great. I mean, we had a great time, especially the beach area from Tayulita to like all those sand, the beach towns. We really liked it. So I think that is the probably the main difference for me, the exposure to the indigenous aspect of Mexico. You know, there are so many places within Mexico to go that uh, it's great that you have an opportunity to try a couple of different places on. And Merida's, yeah. Merida's what, what kind of place are you living in in Merida? So we, uh, so we got a apartment, like it's a gated community thing, but we are probably, we are within the city limits. Mm -hmm. So we could uh, get to the center maybe in 10, 15, 15 minutes. And we are about one hour from all the main pyramid places and all the cenotes. Oh my God, they're amazing. <laughs> what, do you, what do you like about them? You know, there's, I don't know, it's just such a different experience for me. I mean, I grew up in a tropical island, so I'm used to beaches. And I lived in Australia, so the beaches don't really get, and I'm used to hot weather. So for me, when I see this, you know, there's a whole uh, biology behind it and this the history and then there are all these theories about how the cenotes were formed and the pyramids and what they did with it and like we don't even know exactly who built some of these pyramids and there are theories around like extraterrestrial activities and this is very fascinating. So how big is your apartment? Tell us a little bit about the size of your apartment and yeah. how much you pay for it a month and that. So basically 
actually in Riviera Nayarit, we had a three bedroom house with three bathrooms and it was too big for us. We were paying 14,000 pesos a month and with a pool and all that, but it was, um, it was a lot of work to maintain it. So here we have a two bedroom apartment and it's a lot easier and we pay 10,000 pesos. So 4,000 pesos cheaper than Porto Island. Well, a lot of people watching this video right now would be uh, very thrilled to hear that they could find a place like that uh, with a, a great year-round climate for that kind of price. Yeah, and plus the 10,000 pesos also include um, um, sorry, uh, internet and cable TV. Okay. No electricity, though. No electricity. <laughs> but, our, but our electricity bills are like... 500 pesos a month. Really? I'm not sure what we do differently. It's hot there. How, how can that be possible? But we use the AC only at night, on some months, not, not every month. Oh, because it, it Merida has a reputation of being pretty hot year-round. Yes. yes, it's unbearable. Yeah, but somebody, somebody from Sri Lanka, I'm sure it doesn't bother you much at all. And Sydney. Sydney is quite hot too, sometimes. So you guys have been in Merida for how long now? In Merida for a year exactly. We came here last December. So you're still enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, still. Unfortunately, because of the COVID, we couldn't um, experience as many things as we would have liked to. So the first few months in January, February, we traveled a bit. Uh, we went to Cuba, to Belize, and experienced the Caribbean a bit. And, checked as many pyramids as we could, and then came the lockdown. <laughs> so nothing much happened after March. And now we are slowly, you know, going out here and there within the guidelines, but it's still very limited. And all the festivities are kind of closed, shut. <laughs> How fluent are you in Spanish? Uh, I'd say now maybe between intermediate to advanced, probably around B2. When I came, it was very basic, but um, I started studying Spanish when I lived in Sydney before I had any idea of this travel or Mexico because I just liked the language. And then it all fell together like, oh, okay, I'm learning Spanish, I'm traveling. So, and then when I moved here, it, my Spanish was quite basic, mm -hmm. but then I lived here for a more than a year and a half now so now i can speak and live by myself without english but it's not as fluent as a native so what's the expat community like there are you guys uh, involved at all with other expats i think i was probably more involved in puerto Vallarta, probably because there was no covid like we would go and volunteer at the dog shelter spc at puerto Vallarta. Mm -hmm. And we would uh, get involved in local events. But here I have, like, as I came, I taught financial literacy at a, using a charity at a youth shelter. Mm -hmm. And we have had some occasional communication, but after COVID, all the events kind of shut down, all the markets and everything. So nothing much really mm -hmm. happened since. But we are members of the expat group. So it's, there's a very active Facebook expat group here in Merida and very informative. So have, have you gotten out much at all? I mean, have you had an opportunity to put a mask on and go out and do some things? Yes. So like a couple of months ago, we went to Cancun for a few days and it was okay. But uh, similar to here, there are things you can't do. And uh, we still have a couple of pyramids remaining to visit, but they are closed right now for one due to the hurricane uh, damage. And uh, we used to go to these um, expat markets and all that, but those things don't happen. Mm -hmm. So basically right now we just go about uh, the mask and sometimes go for a walk, or drive around the city. Uh, day after tomorrow we are going to Valladolid to see the cenotes because most of the cenotes have reopened. So we have like four cenotes we want to experience through the day. So like that, we, we have outings. So, what do you guys? What, what do you like most about living in uh, in in Merida? What 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 are the like the three things that you really love about living there? Well, one is that there is 
in normal times. There are so many different things to do. There's so much culture. Like you could go to see some um, a Mayan a Mayan ball game. Like not the real thing, but the 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 acted out thing. Mm -hmm. And there are so much festivities and dancing and street events and expat art events. And there's so much to do. And also, it's like the natural aspect of it is um, that's one the, the activities, and the second one is um, there are the cenotes and the the beaches fairly close, and also just all these history like the pyramids and the Mayan temples, and so that is probably one of my like top three things to do mm -hmm. because it's just so close by. And uh, the third one is. Um, just a lifestyle. It's just really chilled out. You know, there is no stress. <laughs> it's, it's not like like I've spent time in um, like I've traveled to like London, New York, and I lived in Sydney. It's not nothing like that. You know, nobody's running. Nobody's trying to catch the next whatever. It's that's the magic of Mexico. You know, it's the uh, great lifestyle here. Everybody's on their own Mexican time. That's exactly right. So what is your cost of living there? I think our cost of living here is much less than that, that what it was in Puerto Vallarta. It's uh, on average less than 1500 US dollars a month. What what other uh, areas of Mexico have you visited since you've lived here now? I, I have been to Puerto Vallarta, Nayarit, uh, CDMX, uh, San Luis Potosi. Puebla, Morelia, uh, Villa Hermosa, uh, Yucatan, uh, Quintana Roo. Uh, I don't know, I think. Well, you, you've I gotten think. around more than most expats. <laughs> yes, I mean, I like to travel. So do you, how, I, yeah. how do you travel? Do you take the bus? No, we bought a small car when we moved to Puerto Vallarta to drive. And when we went traveling overseas, we um, after we gave up the base in Puerto Alta, we found a nice neighbor who was willing to hold the car for us. <laughs> so we have used that car now, I mean, so much. We drove all the way from Puerto Alta to here in the same car and have used it so much that it has paid for itself. <laughs> I'm curious, how, how long did it take you to drive from Puerto Vallarta to uh, um, Merida? We drove through four days, but I think if you really, like the first day we drove for about 10 hours and the last day, but the two days in between we did like very short drives. So we mm -hmm. did like half a day and then we stopped to explore and all that. So you, generally I think four days, but you can do it maybe three or five depending mm -hmm. on. And and you found the uh, highway system to be good? Yes, very good. But the tolls are probably some of the most expensive I have come across in my life compared to Europe or any other places we have driven in. And But the I find the highway system really good. I mean, you can also go on the other roads, but if you want and if you're willing to pay, I think it's like super convenient and also safe, I think. Exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, the one thing about uh, the highway system in Mexico is that you do run into a lot of toll sections. So you you, yeah. you, you, you run through a lot of toll booths, yeah, so have a lot of extra change in your pocket. Do you think that you might be uh, sticking around Mexico for a while? Yes, definitely. I, um, so the initial plan was for us to stay here for a year and then figure out where we wanted to go next. Yeah. But uh, we liked it so much. I mean, I liked it so much that I renewed my temporary residency for three more years. So I think I'm going to stay out here for as long as it works. Well, we're glad to have you here. Thalini, thanks so much for your time today. And have a great day. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. Have a great day, too.